Good morning, good morning. Rise, shine, and give God the glory. We're thankful that you have tuned into our broadcast this morning. What an amazing time. Thank you so much for tuning in. And listen, let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you for who you are. We praise and we magnify you. And we thank you for this amazing morning that we come together as a family and worship. Thank you for our online listeners. And Father, we thank you now that in advance that for those that will come to Christ today that didn't want that once didn't know you. We love you for who you are. We praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a leak in this old building And my soul has got to move My soul has got to move My, 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 my soul has got to move There's a leak in this old building And my soul has got to move Well, I've got another building I may be dead and go on. Listen, but before I go on, I, I want to let you know that I am moving to my brand, brand new home. Well, this old building keeps on sinking, y'all, and my soul. Oh, this soul building keeps on sinking, y'all, and my soul has got to move. I've got another building. To all of my friends, God said He would wipe, 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 wipe my wife, my crying eyes. For this soul building keeps on sinking, y'all, and my soul has got to move. I said, my soul has got to move. I said, my, 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 my soul. For this soul. I am, I'm going to move, I'm moving on, going back home to all I know, I'm moving on, I'm going upstairs to see, I'm moving on, I've got to see my Jesus about a few things, I'm moving on, all the things I've dealt with in my life, I'm moving on, everything I've been through, I'm moving on, oh God, I'm going to see I'm moving on, I'm moving on, to a building, to a, a building, building not made, made by man's hands. I am troubled, but not 
Anybody ever been lost? 
Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm trying not to let them go anywhere, man. They got to come back for round two of that. My God, that was so stirring. Oh, my God. What a day. What a day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We certainly rejoice and are glad in it. Anybody out there used to be lost <laughs> and now you're found. I'm so glad he found us when he found us. Amen. And we're praying. We're praying. If you're lost out there, we're praying that by the end of today's service, you too will be found in the presence of Jesus Christ. You will be found with salvation and eternal life is yours for the asking. Amen. Oh my God, that was powerful. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you, God, for this time of preaching. We thank you and pray that you will receive uh, not only our praises, but our, our words of and our thoughts on today. God, help us to be centered around your will, to be centered according to your word, and to be centered and doing uh, and walking according to your ways. God, now bless this hour that we have together. Bless now this time and continue to allow your fellowship of your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in our hearts. Help us to remain clear and focused on your word. In the name of Christ Jesus, we do bless you and thank you Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise one more time. Amen. Woo, that was some good singing. I'm telling you right now, good praise and worship just does something for the heart, mind, and the soul. You should be able to start your week off tomorrow like none other after having praise and worship like that. Amen. Well, guess what? It's preaching time. And if you've got your Bibles nearby, go ahead and turn with me to the same section that we were on last week. First Samuel chapter one. And let's pick up with verse 12. This, this, this week, verse 12. You got it? Awesome. Let's read it together. See, verse 12 says, as Hannah kept on praying to the Lord, the priest Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. And he said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. And in verse 15, Hannah responded, it's not what you think. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I've been drinking not of wine and beer, but I've been pouring out my soul to the Lord. So please don't think of me as a wicked woman. I've, I've, been, I've just been praying out of my anguish, my great anguish and my grief. Verse 17, Eli answered, then go in peace and may the God of Israel Grant you what you have asked of him. Verse 18, she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way. And the Bible says she ate something. Hmm, last week she wasn't eating. This week she ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Verses 19 and 20 concludes. And early the next morning, they got up worship the Lord, and then went back home where Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And verse 20 says, so in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son that she named Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Mm, my God, for just a few minutes, for the few minutes that we have together this morning, I'd like to tag this morning's message. The Lord heard you, my sister, part two. <laughs> all right. See, 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 part one was enough for us to, to just to take in all of last week. But part two, 
uh, adds to uh, what we, we learned on last week. There was drama. There was drama, y'all, in the, uh, at the dinner table last week in Elkanah's household. You remember uh, his, uh, his second wife, Penina, was all at it again. She was criticizing his first wife, uh, Hannah, for not being able to have children. She had lost her hope. She had lost her appetite. And the Bible says that she excused herself from the table to have a talk with God. Hmm, we learned on last week that when, when, when life grips you and your enemy has you in tears with no appetite for life, that's when you and the Lord need to have a conversation. <laughs> don't you waste your time and uh, don't you waste your breath arguing with fools because you'll never win. Don't, don't waste your time waiting on folks to change because they rarely do. But, but carve out some time in the day to sit down and just talk with the Lord. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll, he'll hear your, your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. My God, my God, don't you shout me early this, this morning in the message yet. Come on, just wait a little longer to see how the story unfolds. Here it is, Hannah. Hannah leaves the table, goes to the altar where she prays. And in her prayer, she poured out before God she pleaded for God and she made a promise to God. See, when you're really desperate for the hand of God, you don't mind pouring, you don't mind pleading, you don't mind promising. See, the Bible says that she poured out her soul before God and she pleaded for God to give her a man child that was pouring and pleading. And that she promised that if God granted her this one request, she promised to dedicate him back to God for all the days of his life. My God, that's, that's where we ended on last week. Remember when I asked you the question, when we got ready to close the sermon out, I asked you if God gives you what you've been pouring and pleading and promising him for, then, then if, if, if he gives you that, are you willing to dedicate it back to him? Are you willing to give that promotion back to him? I know, I know, I know it's hard. Are you willing to dedicate that marriage back to him? Are you willing to give that child back to him, that new house that you've been praying for, back to him for his glory? That, that was where we were last week. But when we pick up this week, Hannah is still praying. Oh, my God, this is rich. See, last week she was praying. And now this week we find her in verse 12 still praying. My God. God, don't you be jealous of her. She's a woman of God. She's a godly woman. And that's what godly women do. They, they pray and, and they pray not only just today, but they pray continually. That where, where are my folks at who are always in the face of God, who are always praying, who are always uh, praying, never ceasing, constantly talking to God on Sunday and then getting up early morning uh, on Monday and talking to God throughout the day on Tuesday and Wednesday talking to God. During lunch hour on Thursday, you're talking to God. On the way home Friday, you're in the car and folks think you're crazy because they can't hear you. They can't see what you're saying, but they know that your lips are moving and but you're talking to God on Friday on the way home. And then early in the morning on Saturday and again on Sunday, you're talking to God. You, you're God's Hannah's if you're always found praying. But notice, notice the Bible never mentions that Penina, <laughs> you remember Penina, the messy wife. They didn't say that she was found praying because messy folks won't pray. I didn't say they can't pray. I didn't say, I didn't say, say they don't pray. I said they won't pray. They refuse to pray. They might pray P-R-E-Y, but they won't P-R-E-Y. A Y. They, they, they just won't. The Bible doesn't say that Elkanah, the husband, was found praying, even though we know Elkanah had to be a godly man because he took his family to worship. But the Bible is clear that there was one in the whole household that was found praying, and it was Hannah. But watch the text. Watch the text. As she continued praying, Eli, the priest, over on the side, back in the wings, was watching her. And what the preacher saw in his eyes didn't match 
what he heard with his ears. <laughs> See, with his eyes, he saw Hannah's lips moving, but he couldn't hear what she was saying. In other words, evangelist Eli saw a woman whose lips were moving, but he couldn't hear anything coming out of her mouth. <laughs> come on now, if you come on, fellas, y'all gonna have to help me with this one because most of the time, if we're honest, if we're honest, that, that when, when a woman's lips are moving, you can best bet that there's a sound that's going to follow. <laughs> just tell, I don't, I, you might not, you might be too close to her to raise your hand and say amen. So just mouth amen real, like you're like a ventriloquist and just don't let them see your lips moving. Just say amen, brother, amen, brother, pastor, amen. L listen, in Eli's eyes and according to what he's experienced, anytime a woman's lips are moving but nothing is coming out, his assessment is she must be drunk. If, she, if her lips are moving and nothing's coming out, maybe she's been hitting the mad dog too much. But, 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 what, but he did, what he didn't realize was that Hannah wasn't drunk. She was just praying in secret. Oh, my God. I told you last week, and I'll say it again, that everybody doesn't need to know everything you're praying about. I know, you, I know we have prayer requests. We give folks, pray for me, pray for me this, pray for me that. And sometimes we give generic, you know, just pray for me. We don't know what we're praying for. And then sometimes we give specifics. But, but when you're praying, everybody doesn't need to know what you're praying about. I wish I had a witness this morning. Talk back to me if you can. See, prayers, prayers are not meant for the ears of the people or the preachers, but prayers. Prayers are meant to be heard by God. So, so, so listen, when you pray, pray so that God can hear you, not man. So when you pray, pray so that God can understand your request, not man. Because man doesn't know how to help you and man doesn't understand your pain. But my God, help me, help me on this morning to understand that God knows our pain and understands our pain. Hannah, Hannah. Hannah's married to a man who can't relieve her pain. If you're taking notes this morning, go ahead and make a note of that, 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 that some folks can't relieve our pain. And she's sleeping two bedrooms down uh, from a woman who doesn't care about her pain. Come on, take a note on that too, that some folks just don't care about your pain. Now, but, but, but now she's in the Lord's house. She's at church, y'all, but she's being watched by a pastor who doesn't understand her pain. Oh my God. You know, my God, I'm, I'm giving you too much this morning. Help me, Holy Ghost. See, see, you'll find in life that folks either can't do anything for you, they or, or either they don't care anything about you, or, or they can't relate to anything that you're going through. And, and that's, where, that's where Hannah finds herself. She's, she's surrounded with people who either can't help her, who don't want to help her, who don't understand how to help her. And Eli doesn't know that Hannah is at her wit's end. She's a, the, the preacher doesn't know that she's a woman who has put up uh, uh, with things day after day. He, he doesn't know the facade that she's had to put on just to stay in the relationship with Elkanah. She, she, he doesn't know the, 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 the facade that she's had to put on, the face that she's had to make up just to keep showing up for work day after day. Oh yeah, I'm talking to somebody. He's, he's, he's a man of God, but he just doesn't realize how many devils she's had to fight on Sunday morning just to make it to church. Pastor Eli doesn't understand her story. Who am I talking to this morning? Folk, folk, folks who don't know your story. They'll always assume the worst. Eli assumes the worst in her. He assumes she's a drunk woman when really she's a praying woman. He assumes that she's out of her mind. She's lost everything. But, but he doesn't understand she's a woman who's calling on her last option, which is praying to her God to come through for her. Sometime today, I need you to post that if you don't know my story, then keep your version to yourself. Hey, God, keep Keep your version. If you don't know what's going on in my life, then keep your version of my story to yourself. Hannah is having a conversation with the one who mattered the most. She's having a conversation between her and God. <laughs> so, when, so when Eli inquires uh, if she's been drinking and under the influence of alcohol, Hannah stops praying. 
and pleads her case with Eli. Listen to what she says. I'm going to paraphrase it for you. He, she says, she, she looks at Pastor Eli. She says, Evangelist Eli, <laughs> whatever you do, don't put me out of the church right now. Whatever you do, don't, don't, don't report me to the missionary society. Please don't, Pastor. Don't, don't call on the ushers to escort me out of the sanctuary. Please don't, don't, don't bring the white gloves near me. I, 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 haven't been, I haven't been pouring too much wine, but, but I've been pouring out my soul to the Lord. So please, Brother Pastor, don't, don't, don't make me out to be a sinful woman. All I've been doing is praying out of my pain and my grief. See, the only thing Hannah is guilty of is pouring out her heart on the altar before God. She's been praying, and she's been praying specifically for a son. Hannah, she's a woman that's deeply disturbed. She's a woman that's going through some things. She's a woman whose patience has been tried for the last time. She's about to click, and right now she's, she's going to God, and this is her last option. But watch the text because something shifts for Hannah. In verse 18, and it's all because of what happens in verse 17. You, oh my God, y'all going to get this. You're going to get this in your spirit today. See, 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 her verse 18 changes completely because of what happens in verse 17. See, the way the way she came to church isn't the way that she leaves to go home. Oh my God. She comes to church one way, but she leaves the church another way. In verse 17, let me tell you what happened. Eli, Eli, after hearing her argument that she's been pouring out her heart in secret to God, that she's not drunk, after he hears her explanation, in verse 17, the Bible says that Eli blesses Hannah with these words. He says to Hannah, go my sister in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you've asked him for. Oh, my God. He, he, the pastor assures Hannah that the Lord has heard her. Hey, God, these are the very, the, the very words that change Hannah's entire countenance so that by the time we get to verse 18, when he's dropped that affirmation in her spirit, that it changes her whole focus and her whole mindset. And that's why I stopped by this morning to tell you the same thing, that God has heard your request. And what, whatever you've been praying for, that thing you've been pouring out for, that thing you've been pleading and promising, sing the Lord for. I just came by to tell you that the Lord will remember you. The Bible says that the next day, keep reading in the Bible, the Bible says that the next day that, that, that Hannah and Elkanah returned home and they made love. Oh my God, y'all, that's the best PG-13 version I can give you on today. And you'd have to cover the ears of your children up for the rest of it. But they, but they did what they had done countless times before and it had failed. But this time, they started working their faith. Oh my God. Sometimes you got to work your faith so, because faith without works is dead. So they decided to, 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 to act on what they believed God for. Somebody type work it, baby. Work it. Work it, my sister. Work it, my brother. You got you to you gotta work it. You got to work what you believe God for. You got to work your faith. Elkanah came home. Notice that the countenance of his, of his first baby girl, his wife, his boo, notice that Hannah's countenance had changed. <laughs> so Elkanah went in and lit some candles, put on some Sade, <laughs> and did what married couples do when they want babies. <laughs> they, the, the word of God says that day after day, they kept working. Their, their faith over the course of time. And they says over the course of time, Hannah became pregnant, gave birth to a son, <laughs> and named him Samuel. See, you got to look at the text real closely because there's a prophet that's inside Hannah. There's a prophet that God is getting, getting ready to use in order to usher in the first kings of Israel. And eventually, that same prophet sets up the lineage for the king of kings himself, Jesus Christ. See, the blessing in her womb had more to do with God's plan than her pregnancy. The blessing in your womb, my sister, is more than just getting even with everybody who doubted you. Brother, the, the blessing that's in you uh, that's about to manifest itself, it's bigger than your own agenda. This blessing 
It's all about the power of God <laughs> and the will of God. This time, somebody shout this time. This time, the, the Lord remembered Hannah. This time, <laughs> it, the Lord made good on her request and Hannah conceived. Gave birth to a son named Samuel. She named him Samuel because Samuel's name simply means God heard. This blessing is for every panana that laughed at your misfortune, that God is about to remember you. This blessing, the, the, this blessing is for every person that provoked you to pray, that God is about to remember you. <laughs> this, this here blessing is, 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 is for everyone that doubted God's hand over your life. That God is about to remember you. This blessing is for the haters that taunted your misery. That God is about to remember you. You've been praying. You've been crying. You've been crying, you've been praying, but this time, my God, this time, the Lord's about to remember you. So do me a favor. In the next seven days, when, when you give birth to what God has conceived in you, I need you to shout, my Samuel has arrived. <laughs> I know it's going to sound crazy when you type it on Facebook or when you let some folks know and when you text them and say, my Samuel has arrived, they're going to start asking, what do you mean? What are you talking about? When you get your breakthrough, let the world know that God has heard you. When your deliverance shows up, let folks know that God remembered you. <laughs> and all of those who agree with the preached word of God this morning, Shout glory to God. Amen. 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 Listen, 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 listen. You guys, listen, we're about to get out of here. But listen, I've got, we've got a couple more things i got to put before you. And the first thing is one of the main things we actually came online to do. And that is to offer Christ to you. This is our invitational period. This is our invitation to discipleship. This is where we offer salvation. We, 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 we tell you what it takes to be saved. And then we count on God and the Holy Spirit to work in you so that they bring about the salvation. How do I, how do I get saved, Pastor? By, by confessing the Lord Jesus Christ and believing that God raised him from the dead for your salvation, for your life eternal. Then guess what? Thou art saved. It's that simple. A confession and a belief in your heart and you too can be saved. I pray, I pray, I pray. That, that you will receive the gift of salvation free. You don't have to do anything other than believe and confess. And guess what? Salvation is yours. We pray right now that, that you will receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Listen, and before we get out of here, I just want to remind you we have uh, we have a need for you to help support this ministry. And so we're asking you to be faithful and consistent in your giving. Thank you so much for the way that you've been texting your offering. Thank you for the way you've been mailing in your offering and then using our app uh, system to, to also send in your contributions. Thank you so much for being consistent and faithful with that. God bless you. Well, it's time to get out of here. I know we've got a busy rest of the Sunday plan. I know you've got a busy week ahead of you. It's a full week, so don't count on any time off. It's just going to be a straight Monday through Friday. So just get ready for God to show up and show out in every arena of your life. Amen. Come on, let me pray God's blessings over you. Heavenly Father, we bless you and we thank you for these that are watching, God, those that have received the word of God on today, God. Thank you for speaking to us and through us. Now, God, we pray that you will go before us this week. God, help us, God, to, to map out the journey that we're on. Help us, God, by clearing the path so that we know exactly which roads to take, which turns to make, God. Help us to understand when to speak and when to shut up, God. Help us to put on the brakes, to pump the brakes when we're going too fast and getting ahead of you, God. Help us to catch up to where we need to be if we're lagging behind, God. Grow us up in your word 
word and then allow our experiences to shape us into the children of God that you would have us to be. Teach us how to serve you, God. Teach us how to serve you with our whole heart, mind, and soul. Now, forgive us, God, if if we sinned against you in our thoughts and our deeds. But God, we pray that you will allow the blood of your son, Christ Jesus, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and make us whole and pure in your sight. Now, God, we glorify you. We magnify your holy name. We pray your safety and your protection from all hurt, harm, and danger throughout this week until we meet again. We love you, God. We bless you. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. God bless.